five bells. Stand by all stations. Attention, all districts. A five alarm fire. Five bells move in immediately. That's it. Let's go. Let's go. Presenting Firefighters, the true-to-life story of our unsung heroes who stand ready to ride by day or night against our most murderous enemy, the Demon of Fire! In just a moment, we'll join Chief Cody and rookie fireman Tim Collins in the town of Plum Valley, where they have joined with their host, the editor of the local paper, in his fight to make the people realize their desperate need for basic firefighting equipment and trained men. A long series of fires started through ignorance or carelessness and allowed to get out of control because of an inefficient volunteer system has put many people on Tom Culpepper's side, but not the all-important president of the town council who seems blind to the danger facing the town. Well, the fight is in the open now, as you'll see, right after the following message. Let's go, firefighters. Let's get over to that house where the crowd had rushed when a small porch fire had broken up the meeting of the town council. Editor Tom Culpepper had proved his point about trained firefighters when his friends Chief Cody and Tim Collins had gotten the fire out before Turner Lawson and his volunteers had even arrived. Now, as the crowd breaks up, it's obvious to Tom that no amount of reasoning or example will change the stubborn opposition of the president of the town council. The chief and Tim stand by uneasily as their friend makes his declaration of war. I believe the average citizen of this town sees the need we face for decent fire, uh, safeguards against fire, Lawson. Suppose you leave that to me, Culpepper. Yeah, but you're supposed to represent the people. Not that I think you do any longer. And what do you mean by that? I'm going to suggest they throw you and your whole slate out of office on election day, day after tomorrow. So, you think you can threaten me? Oh, no, not at all. In this country, we have a choice of candidates, whether you like it or not. <laughs> my opponents don't stand a chance, Culpepper. Well, we'll see. He's going to support my stand for fire equipment, three paid firemen, and trained volunteers. All right, Culpepper, go ahead and fight me. I think you'll regret it. Yes, and these two friends you've brought in to interfere. I think you'll all regret it. Oh, brother, that guy really sounds sore. I agree with Tim. Will he cool off, Tom? No, no, Chief Cody, he won't. He's a tough customer. Well, as long as we believe in what we're fighting for. Right. But I, I, I hate to drag you two into my fight. Oh, don't worry. This is our fight, too, huh, Tim? Oh, yes, sir. If we can help make Plum Valley a safer place for people to live, we'll stick to the end, sir. Oh, thanks. I don't have any doubts we'll win, but... Well, I, I would feel a lot more comfortable if I knew what Turner Lawson was going to do next. But by the next morning, editor Tom Culpepper has room for nothing in his mind but the campaign which must be fought in the next 24 hours before the election. Once again, the living room of his home is serving as the editorial office for the burned-out courier. As he writes, he frequently consults with Chief Cody. Both men are so intent on the job ahead, Turner Lawson's threats are quite forgotten for the moment. Yeah, okay, Chief. Now, uh, if this doesn't cover the situation in a way that'll make people think, I don't know what will. Yeah, you've reviewed every fire in town for the past year. And pointed out how unnecessary most of them were. Right up to the Hancock block the day before yesterday. The thing to stress there is, if it had been properly handled, it wouldn't have rekindled and burned your plant. Yeah, I also stressed the shocking fact not a single volunteer was on hand to save my place. Well, it's hard to tell which you folks need most, organization or equipment. Oh, we need both. And we're going to get them. Now, uh, let's get on to that editorial. This is your baby, Chief. You're the authority. Well, I spent part of yesterday poking around town. Uh, let me draw up a list. Hmm? And naturally, we need a fire truck that'll do the job. A, um, uh, 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 what you call it? Uh, <laughs> a pumper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pumper. And one that will step up the pressure enough to give you a real stream of water. Either that or a new gravity water tank for the town. You can't put out a fire with a trickle of moisture. Yeah, that's the kind of thing I want. 
Now, what else? Well, you mentioned how important the Cotter Tool Company was to the life of Plum Valley, Tom. Yeah. Now, if you don't get larger water mains out in that section, you'll have trouble someday. Mark my words. Uh, Chief Cody, can I see you a minute, sir? Why, sure, Tim. Well, hello, Luther. Uh, Uh, You remember Luther drove the fire truck to your plant when it was on fire the other night, Tom? I sure do. Wish we had a dozen volunteers like him. Uh, I'm not a volunteer, Mr. Culpepper. I'd like to be, but my job driving a truck took me out of town too much. Of course, of course, but... Now, if you don't mind, the the chief and I are kind of busy. Well, wait a minute, Tom. We need the point of view of young fellows who take an interest in firefighting. Oh, I'm I'm afraid interest is not enough, chief. Our volunteers need training. Yeah, granted, but don't forget your experience. Seeing they turn out for alarms is just as important. I figure you could fix that easy enough, sir. Yeah, how? Pay them a little something for their work, but base it on each fire they turn up for. I think that's a darn good idea, Chief. It's hard, dangerous work, and they ought to be paid. How about that, Tom? Looks like you're going to see your ID in print, Luther. I was thinking, Chief, a town this size could afford a regular driver, a man stationed at the fire barn regular hours, someone who could uh, be trained to direct the volunteers. If Tom's plan goes through, why not? And I've got an idea Luther'd be just the man for the job, sir. I'd be willing to spend some time working with him. But Luther's got a job, son. Uh, no, sir. That's what we came in to tell you. I've been fired. What? Turner Lawson fired you? Hey, you do work for the president of the town council, don't you? I did, Chief Cody. But he found out I helped Tim deliver Mr. Culpepper's newspaper after the fire. Yeah, uh, you remember, Tom? It had that bang-up editorial in it calling folks out to the town meeting. Yeah, but uh, this is no way to get back at me. Well, he knows I agree with what you're trying to do. Well, that's still no excuse. You've got a right to your opinion. Yes, sir, and if you ask me, it's a pretty low trick. It's certainly not a very fair way to fight back. Well, you wondered what Mr. Lawson would do when you said your paper was coming out for his opponent in the election tomorrow. Yeah, but this is so petty. Lawson's a tough man to buck. I I knew that. But to to stoop to something like this, I... Well, I I wish there was something I could do, Luther. Oh, I'll get another job. If we win in the election and the new town council appropriates money for decent fire protection, Luther, we'll see what we can do about Tim's suggestion. I can't think of anything I'd like better than being a fireman, but the town's a lot more important than me. Well, you're a good lad. I think I'm a lot madder about this than you are. Well, we'll fight all the harder now, eh, Chief? Right. And we won't use tactics like this to win either, Tom. Are you an expert on politics as well as fires, Chief Cody? Mr. Lawson, how long have you been standing in the doorway? Long enough, Collins. Door was open, Culpepper, and I thought I'd drop in and see how your campaign was coming. Read all about it in the Courier when it comes out, Lawson. When I get through with you, you'll wind up with one boat, your own. You don't say. You, Luther, you're planning to deliver papers today? Yes, sir, if Mr. Culpepper wants me to. I've been thinking it over, Luther. If you'll admit you've been misled, I might take you back. I figure this town needs fire protection more than I need a job. I was convinced that was in the town's best interest, Luther. Don't you think I'd be the first to vote funds for that purpose? No, sir. I think you're a penny pincher from way back, and I ought to know I worked for you. Uh, Son, you do my heart good. And now, Mr. Lawson, if you don't mind, we've got a newspaper to get out. I thought your plant burned down, Culpepper. It could have been saved, Mr. Lawson, if your town council had taken the action it should. Now, take it easy, Tim. Mr. Lawson's got a lot to learn. I hope he doesn't discover his mistake too late. He'll discover it tomorrow after the election, Chief. You see, Lawson, some people around here have got a sense of fair play. Al Jenkins in the next town is mostly a competitor of mine. I know. I talked with him a few minutes ago. Well, then you know he's letting me print a make-up edition of the Courier and his plant for the time being. I know he was. What do you mean? Al's discovered his presses are all tied up today. Will be until after the election. No. No, he he wouldn't do this to me. He did seem to regret it a good deal more than I expected. But it so happens he's pretty heavily in debt to me, Culpepper. He didn't have much choice in the matter. Mr. Lawson, I'm forced to say I think it would be a good thing for this town if you were defeated. Sorry to disappoint you, Chief Cody. I won't be now. You'll be interested to know, however, that I'm taking your advice about our volunteers. I personally am going to reorganize our system. Well, don't tell me you're going to train them, too. Train them, Collins? What's so difficult about putting out a fire? I'm afraid that's a dangerous attitude, Mr. Lawson. I hope you're willing to take the responsibility the first time you find out how difficult it can be. I am, Chief Cody. I am. Good day, gentlemen. Well, there goes my dream of a decent fire department. Oh, come now, Tom. You're not giving up. No, no. We'll do the best we can. But 
I was counting on the courier to give uh, the voters the facts. That way, I was sure they'd draw their own conclusion. See what was best for the town. Yes, sir. There's no way we can get that paper out now? No, Tim, not in time. Lawson's won this round. All right, Tom. Maybe we'll take the next one. Yeah, right now, I don't see how, Chief. It looks to me like we're stuck. Yes, sir. Really stuck. Is the fighting editor really licked? Or is there still some way the true interest of Plum Valley can be served? To learn what happens before the all-important election, be sure to listen to the next True to Life episode of The Firefighters. In a moment, Fire Chief Cody will tell you boys and girls how you can help the firefighters in your own town. But right now, let's listen to this message. And now Chief Bob Cody with a special message for the Firefighters Brigade. Chief Cody. Hello, boys and girls. Thinking back on that trip Tim and I took to Plum Valley has reminded me that you and your folks probably get away from home once in a while, too. The chance of your running into all the trouble we did is pretty slim. But since we all believe in safety first, here are a couple of rules to keep in mind when you stay at a hotel. First, check all the emergency exits nearby, just in case. Then read the instructions to guests that you'll find posted in your room. And be as careful about causing fire as you are in your own home. That way you're prepared, and you're thinking of others, too. Next time, I'll give you some suggestions about what to do in case fire does break out when you're traveling. Until then, so long. Fire Chief Cody and the young rookie fireman Tim Collins will be back on the same station the next time you hear... That's it. Let's roll! <laughs> Firefighters is a copyrighted feature of William F. Holland Productions.